Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll talk about how do you create really interesting maps in Power BI. No further ado, let's go. All right, I'm in Power BI and let's just start with a generic vanilla map right here. I have some locations and across these locations, I have plotted a metric. The size of the bubble here presents the metric. Now this could be any metric, but the point is that apart from just showing which location is larger, which location is smaller, the map doesn't significantly display any other vital information apart from what location is where, and it's just the size of the bubble. Now let's just go take a look at a rather interesting map which shows you more information than just the plotting of the location and the size of the bubble. All right, on a new sheet, I have a rather interesting map visual that I have created. Now, what makes this map visual interesting is the additional information that I have been able to provide in this map visual, which is just beyond just plotting the locations and the size of the bubble. Take a look, in this visual, I can also see the five highlighted locations which have the fastest growth rate as compared to the last year. So I have some short slicer right here and I can see that how many locations do I want to see? Do I want to take a look at only top two locations, only top three, top four, top five, and this actually displays the data. And of course, I can slice it by the month or slice it by the year and the chart is actually going to work fine. There is also a table that I have built on top of this, which seems to be a part of the map, but it's actually a layered on top of the map, which is nothing but the small table, which actually tells me the name of the state or the location, tells me the units and the last year units and how much growth have we had, of those three highlighted uh, that we are seeing in the map visual. Now I do understand that I have done a lot of layering on top of the map visual, but that layering is what provides the additional insights to the map, which otherwise we were not able to get in a standard map visual. Now let's just go ahead and start to deconstruct this chart and see what do we need to do in Power BI to be able to get to an output like this. All right, I'm back at my vanilla map chart here and let's just start to work with the table. Now I like to work with tables before um, before I create the chart is because tables can allow you to take a look at the values, you can validate the values and then push that into a chart visual. It just makes the process of creating charts more easier. Once I convert this chart into a table visual, I just get to see the two uh, things which are making the chart, which is nothing but the state, which are plotted as locations right here. And the size of the bubble is nothing but the value of the total units, which is shown right here. Now, what I would like to do first is that since I want to highlight the three fastest growing locations, I would want to calculate the growth over last year. That's my first need. Let's just actually do that. I've actually created a simple measure right here, which is Y O Y percentage growth rate as compared to last year. I'm sure you understand simple DAX to be able to do that. I'm declaring total units as current year. Last year, this is a simple same period last year calculation. And here is my simple divide current year by last year minus one to be able to find the growth rate. Nothing that complicated. Now, once I drag this simple measure to my table, I'm going to get the growth for every single location that is there in the map visual. Now, since I want to highlight the top three growing locations, let me just sort this real quick in the descending order and I'll have the top three, top three or two, whatever that might be uh, displayed right here uh, in front of me. Now, I want to just pick up the top three locations or whatever is chosen by the slicer. The slicer is going to come in just a while. But for now, I just want to pick up, let's say only three locations, right? How do I do that? Now I need to write the measure and the measure takes a look at the year on year growth, finds the top three only and displays the value right here. That's what I would like to do. How do I do that? I've written a very simple measure here, top three, and the top three measure only calculates the values for the top three winning year on year growth locations. Now, if you don't really understand this particular measure, I have done another detailed video of top N and others, and I have displayed this particular calculation in far more detail in that video. So in case you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link and you should take a look at that. But for now, this measure is going into my pivot table. Once I drag this top three, you can see that now I get to see only the top three uh, growth rates for those locations who have the winning growth rates. Now I'd like to highlight these. To be able to highlight, what I'm going to use is something like conditional formatting within the chart, which is going to change the color of the bubble, for which I'm going to need uh, like a conditional formatting measure. All that I'm trying to do is that, if you are a winning location, I would like to mark you with a one. If you are not within the top three, I'd like to mark you with a zero. That's all that I'm trying to do. So I just write a very simple conditional formatting measure. And I say that if the calculation uh, right here is, sorry, uh, 
if the calculation which is nothing but the top three is matching the growth rate which is nothing but this particular number then I consider that to be a top three number otherwise not take a look at the simple calculation once I drag this to the pivot table all that I will get to see is one against the three winning locations and the rest of the locations are marked with zero nothing that complicated so far now once I have got all of these numbers appearing clearly and vividly in front of me in a table let's carry this conditional formatting measure and apply conditional formatting to change the color of the bubble in the chart right here how do I do that please take a look now comes the formatting making the chart prettier we have done all the legwork that we need to do in terms of formula writing please take a look I select the chart that I have here I go over to the format pane in the format pane I go over to data colors in data colors I'm going to say that uh, the color is going to be conditionally formatted so I'm just going to click on the FX right here and what is my conditional formatting measure I can just say that I need to write a rule and what is my rule the rule is going to be based on the CF conditional formatting measure that we have created if I am displaying a one that means that that's a fastest growing state and I'd like to apply a different color so let's just do that if this is greater than or equal to one that's a number and less than this is a blank so I can just leave it out as blank and in that scenario if the number is showing one against the state that means it's the fastest growing state in that scenario I'd like to mark it out as some nice color and I can just add a new rule otherwise if the number is actually a zero then I'd like to mark it as a generic color right both colors cannot be bright so I'm just gonna maybe mark it as a gray or something and as soon as I click on OK what you're going to see in your map visual is that the three fastest growing states are going to be marked as the color that we chose pretty good the problem however is that as of now we are fixated on the number three and the user cannot really extend this to four states or five states or maybe multiple number of states how do we do that I have created a simple table right here which is going to be my top table in the top table I just have five values here one two three four and five and these five values appear right here from this particular table I'm going to make a slicer and that slicer is then going to be connected to my map visual which is going to change the number of states that are being highlighted let's take a look so I go back and I create a simple slicer right here in the slicer I'm just going to drag the value convert that as a list I can just maybe format that a bit later and whatever I select right here needs to go in the visual right here so for that I'm gonna write a very simple calculation which is going to capture what the user is selecting right here and then once the value is captured that is going to connect back to the calculation that we have made let's just do that I have a simple uh, calculation that I have written right here which is nothing but the selected value it simply captures what the user is selecting in the in the slicer right here in case the user selects none of these values then I say that at least default by default show me a one in that scenario only one state is going to be highlighted which is the default winning state any which ways once you have this particular measure let's just test it out so I'm just gonna put this measure on the screen right here and convert sorry I had to do it as a card visual so let me make a card visual first and then drop it over there this is bad uh, so card visual and in that visual I'm just gonna drop in the value now you can see that right now no value has been selected therefore it's actually showing me one I can show three four five but as of now once I pick up five the five that I have selected which is being captured right here is not really affecting my chart why because this five that we have created is not really leading back into this manually typed calculation now all that I have to do is this three should not be manually typed but it should be linked back to this calculation that we have created which is the top value selected so I'm just going to reference it back to the top value selected top value press enter and now you can see that there are five values highlighted in the chart if I change that to four now we have four values highlighted in the chart the other formatting aspect that I strongly suggest that I also personally do in my chart is that I don't really try to color my chart tone down the color as much as possible of the chart itself so that the locations can be highlighted how do I do that I prefer to have the chart in a gray style format so if I click right here go over to the map styles and I convert the chart into a gray style format once I do that you can see that now the focus is a lot more on the bubbles and the highlighted bubbles as compared to the water uh, and the oceans around India 
And finally, we have a chart like this, which is where I have also stuck a small table to kind of give details about which three states are winning. So the user can actually take a look at the three states, the units, the last year number, and the Y or Y growth rate. And once the user changes these values right here, the values actually appear not only in the table, but also in the chart. Now, if you realize that in the same real estate that we had, which is nothing but this rectangular box, we have been able to display a lot more interesting information that was just not coming out in the simple plain vanilla chart that, that we had initially. All right, I'm back. I took a small break to get the other chart back to the screen so you can take a look at which chart actually looks better and gives you not only just a good look and feel, but also more insights per pixel that is displayed on the screen. All right, those were my two cents on creating interesting map visualizations. The idea here was to display why or why growth rate, but you can essentially pick up any valuable metric that is important to the user and display it creatively on the map visual. I just tried to show it with year on year. You can do it with any other metric as well. Now, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a big shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI, and it seems that DAX and Power Query are too hard and you'd like to master the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging problems of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.